now like to introduce the next public advocate of the city of New York, Councilman Bill de Yay! Thank you. Thank you so much. I am so honored, so pleased to have the support of the dynamic leadership of the Bronx. And I gotta tell you, having served with Jimmy and with Annabelle and the council, I say this from the bottom of my heart, they are the epitome of public service. They are activists. They are extremely involved in everything that happens to City Hall, always as the voice of the people. They, neither one of them ever shied from a fight. And also, on the ground, in their neighborhoods, tremendous constituent service. I want to say the same about Mike and what he does for us at Albany, what he does on the ground in the neighborhood. What I love about all these folks, as elected officials, is you know they are the real thing. They are the real thing. We have, unfortunately, some people in elective office who haven't always given us the best impression. But then there are others who do the work every day and do it with passion. Mike, Jimmy, Annabelle, your examples to everyone. Thank you for that. It's an honor to have your endorsement. And Kenny, on the political side, you are you are the U.S. Marines. <laughs> okay? no, one, no one does more, no one goes in with more vigor, and makes more impact on the ground than you. So thank you so much for your support. The Bronx matters a lot to me, and it matters a lot to my campaign. We're going to be spending a lot of time here. We're going to be focused on the issues of the Bronx and the needs of the people of the Bronx. And I can tell you it's, it feels like home to me because the, re, the, the district I represent in Brooklyn faces the exact same problems. The small business people in my district feel that City Hall is not listening to them, does not care, is not helping them. In fact, is standing in their way. When they have a need, no one cares, but they're only too happy at City Hall to send out the sanitation agents to give tickets. They're only too happy to take revenue from our small businesses rather than lift them up and help them through the economic crisis. Parents in my district, I'm a public school parent, they feel that the school system isn't responsive to them, they feel that City Hall isn't listening, they're not being brought into the process to be part of the solution. Folks in my community who have faced all the pressures of development, they feel like development's happening to them, not with them. They feel like they're not seeing the affordable housing being created that we need, and the open space, and the, the creation of local jobs. So what I feel, and I hear it from the homeowners, I have an overwhelmingly homeowner district in Brooklyn. I feel it from the, the parents of the small business owners. Everyone feels like City Hall is out of touch with their needs. And the term limits battle made this feeling even sharper. And it became a moment where we had to say that the mayor didn't have a right to do that. And the people wanted something different. So you look through all of this, there's a need for voices to stand up and speak to this mayor and say, when you're wrong, you got to back down. And when you're thinking about the needs only of Manhattan and not the other boroughs, you got to rethink it. And when you're leaving the people out of the equation, getting the people you're serving, something's wrong and it has to be fixed. I want to give you one example that I think is particularly deeply felt by people all over the city, but particularly the outer world. And that is the question of parking tickets and enforcement. We can tell this tale about the sanitation department, as I said, the way that they affront and attack small businesses all the time with minor violations that they turn into huge fines. I could talk to you any number of other examples with the buildings department, but let's just focus on parking tickets because I think it makes the case most sharp. Once upon a time, okay. so parking ticket cost something, no one liked it, but it wasn't a crazy expense and you didn't get them all the time. And it seemed like a parking ticket was given out when there was a reason to give one out. But you know what's happened during the Bloomberg years? Parking tickets become a major source of revenue become a systematic plan by this city, instructing traffic agents to give a ticket for anything and everything, every chance you get. It's in the budget as a revenue item, and what you see is the people who do the enforcement basically being told, stretch the rules as far as you can. Now don't just look for where someone's actually doing something wrong. Look for anything you might be able to interpret as a ticket, give that ticket. The numbers are astounding, and, and let me talk about what's happening here on Castleville Avenue and then talk about the citywide situation. On Castle Avenue, there's one single block of this avenue where over 2,500 parking tickets were issued last year. It's a 
astounding figure on a single block. Do you know what block that is? We're going to get to the exact block. And the, the, uh, as Bob's going to speak in a moment, who's an expert on this, um, but this is true. It's not just a problem in Castle Hill, it's a problem in Frog's Neck, in Morris Park, in Pelham Bay, in Westchester Square. It's a problem everywhere. And right now, people feel like it's, it's like the authority of the city is being used against you. It's supposed to protect the people's interests. It's being used against us. It's being used as a revenue tool. There's no good place to turn. Local representatives, we all do our best case by case, but how do we get some bigger relief here? One of the things I'm going to do as public advocate is audit the entire system of the city giving tickets because it's clear that something has gone fundamentally wrong. Now, I want to shed light on what's happening so we can change the policies and make tickets, again, a matter of actually protecting public safety and following the law, not creating revenue recklessly. And I'm going to set up an ombudsman function so that any New Yorker can call the public advocate office. And if they've been wrongfully given the ticket, full weight of our office will be used to get them justice. And every time we prove that there's a wrongful pattern, we're going to use that to try and change the policies overall. You know, for years and years, we've known there's been a quiet quota system in our city. No one liked that. But this is something even worse. This is revenue produ producing on a high scale. This is telling the agents they have to go beyond the law to get anything that they can get their hands on. And that's got stopped. And I think when we bought it, audit the city and show what's really happening, we're going to be able to get that policy changed. And I want to give you one more statistic. I'm going to have to borrow from my notes here. It's this one about what's happened citywide during the Bloomberg administration. Okay, the mayor's been in office about seven and a half years. According to the New York Times, the number of parking tickets issued in that time has increased 42%. So during the Bloomberg administration, the number of tickets has increased 42%. Revenues grew by 64%. And the mayor added 793 traffic agents. So again, it's pretty clear from those numbers alone. It's not like people have been 42% more unlawful. It's clear the only way you could get to those kind of numbers was by going after people even when they didn't do something wrong. Bob, you gave a great example a moment ago. It's legal in this city for someone to go into a bus stop while at the wheel of their car and drop someone off and then move on. Absolutely legal. And yet traffic agents are ticketing people for doing that. They're stretching every law in every way they can. It has to stop. People are hurting in this city. People cannot afford these huge tickets. And the price of these tickets has gone up and up and up. They cannot afford it. And again, on a small business front, I'm going to hear from Bob in a moment. They can't afford what that does to their customers. And they certainly can't afford all the other enforcement. As I said, sanitation and all the other enforcement that adds to the cost of small business. Businesses are trying to survive this recession. They don't need the city making it worse on them. Those are the kind of issues I want to take on as public advocate. I want to be a voice for the people, a voice for the neighborhoods, a voice for the outer boroughs. We don't want business as usual in City Hall. We want our voices heard. And this mayor needs some checks and balances so our government can function better. That's what I want to achieve. Again, thank you to all my colleagues for their tremendous support means a lot to me. I also know, on a political note, these are people who really reach the citizenry, they reach the voters, and their support is going to have a huge impact on behalf of my campaign here in the